Welcome to the Medical Mnemonist Podcast, brought to you by Med School Coach. Each episode, take a journey into the top techniques for medical mnemonics, study skills, board exam tips, and accelerated learning in higher education. Now, here's your host, Chase DeMarco. It's been a while since we've covered medical mnemonics in any great detail. Now, granted, we have over two years of material if you go back and listen to past episodes, but I thought it would be a good idea to revisit some of these ideas, revisit some of these concepts, maybe update a couple of them from original episodes. And this first part, this mini-series that we're going to create on medical mnemonics is really going to focus on the visual marker, the visual image that you create or that someone else creates and you can use and why this is important for our studies not just in medicine but in general these can be extremely strong tactics to use for any aspect of memory and later recall so the visual marker is basically just an image something goofy something quirky something that stands out and if you've ever seen any of the mnemonics videos out there whether it be something that i've created or sketchy or pigmonic you'll notice there are a lot of different techniques and generally we do something in sort of a cartoonish way because that's just easier to create to mass produce so that others can see it but of course the visual in your head could be very different it's going to be based on what your experiences are and what things you see when you close your eyes. Is it more realistic? Is it more cartoonish? Is it more, I don't know, sketched out? Do you use fictional characters and places or do you use real places and characters? Well, today we're going to cover a little bit more detail about these mnemonics, how to do them, why do them, and also just how to strengthen the technique as you go along with this practice. Because Creating visual mnemonics is a practice. It's sort of like I compare it to learning a language. You might start off a little slow, and as you develop your visual vocabulary, your visual dictionary, I should say, then it becomes easier because you can reuse a lot of the same images and topics and concepts later on. So why do we want to create these mnemonics, these visual images, these weird things to help us associate maybe abstract concepts or to find facts with this image because visuals are so much stronger to our memory and we know this from the basic quote that a picture is worth a thousand words this is very true if you look at an image or a painting just for a split second and then look away or close your eyes how many details can you remember from there can you remember the texture the colors used what images are there how far away are they spaced from each other What's the border of the image or picture like? There's so much you can go on and on and on about with all of the details in this single image that if you were to write it all out, it would be thousands of words long. So when we're trying to use these mnemonics, we're trying to condense information into smaller, more manageable chunks that are going to be easier to recall later on. Visual mnemonics are also a more creative way of learning. You have to put in a little work. You can have a little fun with it. It's much more enjoyable, for instance, than maybe taking notes and reviewing your notes or highlighting a textbook, which if you've listened to any of our best material, you know that a lot of that's not extremely useful for long-term recall. And there's a lot of debate, I would say, regarding creating your own mnemonics and using pre-made ones, such as from the companies earlier mentioned or new companies that are constantly coming out. And I've changed my thought process on this a little bit over the past couple of years. Because if you take in isolation, creating your own mnemonics are stronger because they're personalized to you. They're focused on the material that you are having trouble with, not what someone else is having trouble with. They're using factors that are associated to your life, your past experiences, your emotional tone in the past. And a lot of these can be missing from more generic publicly available resources. But at the same time, it is a learning process to get good at creating mnemonics, and especially for certain topics and concepts. They might be difficult for you to create, and you just get burnt out, and you end up not utilizing the technique. It's also very good to learn these techniques before you go to med school, even before pre-med if you have the opportunity to. The sooner the better. But if you're already in medical school, or even in residency or later. You can still utilize these techniques here and there. 
but we understand that the time constraints that we already have might make it a little less than ideal for some students, in which case pre-made is very efficient. It's very time efficient because it's already made for you, so you don't need to put a lot of effort into it. That means that they're probably not going to last as strongly over time, but they'll get the job done pretty well. However, even if you're using pre-made mnemonics, pre-made visual aids, they may not cover everything in the depth that you need or to the extent that you want it to be for this topic or that topic, especially something that you're having a lot of trouble with. So in this case, at the very least, you're probably going to want to create your own visual markers. And there are a couple of different ways to do this. So in general, if you hear a word or a concept, what comes to mind? Whatever that first thing is that comes to mind is likely to be one of your stronger visual associations to it. If you hear phlebotomist, you might think needle. If you hear lab, you might think of a lab coat or maybe a microscope. Whatever the concept is, whatever visual pops in your mind first, try to use that first. But what really makes it stand out is that you can add characteristics to it. You can make these mnemonics, whether it be an inanimate object or a person, a character, someone in your life, friend or family, character from your favorite TV show, maybe an animal. It doesn't really matter, but you can add other characteristics. You can make it look quirky or goofy. You can personify inanimate objects. You can add violence or sexual appeal to it, which you might think, I don't want to do that, but it's going to stand out stronger in your memory quite often. And either way, you're making it very personal to you. The way that your brain has been shaped by your past experiences, which is going to lead to a stronger connection to that material later on when you try to recall it. Now, there are a couple of things to caution against or for here, and uh, one of those are just some of the pros and cons of using different types of characters in your mnemonics. In particular, family members are tricky because they're, for most of us, people that we see the most frequently, and they're going to be a strong connection in our minds, both visually and emotionally. But as you'll see with some of the later episodes in this mini-series, there might be situations where you put a friend, family member, or loved one in a scenario that you really don't want to see them in, especially if it's a violent or sexual scenario. But it's also okay to use TV characters and cartoons and video game characters and anything else that really stands out to you because those are going to already be familiar with you. They've already formed links in your mind that you can now attach these new concepts to. So if this is your first foray into medical mnemonics and into creating your own visual markers, let's take a step back. You can always refer to past episodes for more details and expert interviews that go into a lot more of the tactics and skills building and advanced techniques. And we'll cover some of those in the future episodes in this mini series as well. But let's give you a little bit of homework today. Let's make this a little enjoyable and interactive. Because when you first hear these techniques, you might really struggle to just get started. And I think an easy way to do this is just to create a couple of lists off the top of your head. And that'll start to stimulate the cognitive juices, so to speak and get you in the right mindset so that with the future episodes, you'll be able to utilize this basic creative thinking process and implement the skills later on. So I want you to make two lists. The first one, I want you to list every name that you can think of. This can be personal, friends, family. This can be characters, politicians, musicians, athletes, whatever you can think of, even cartoon characters and fictional characters, feel free to add them. Anyone that you can picture, especially if you close your eyes, those I want you to put at the top of this list. And we'll come back to this list later. And the second homework assignment, this one's a little more complicated. It's not strictly making a list. I want you to create a list of 10 to 20 concepts in your current field of study, whether that be in general medicine or a particular discipline or subject that you're interested in, 
Pick 10 or 20 words, write those down, and then in a column next to them, I want you to try, and you don't need to be an artist, to draw out something that you associate with these terms or concepts. Just whatever comes to mind first. Again, it's not an artistic depiction. You're the only one that's going to see it. But I just want you to get used to trying to think about what visual image you can associate with different concepts. This will actually be sort of the start of your visual dictionary. So utilize these two homework assignments. If you're driving right now, do it as soon as you get home. Don't negate this because we're going to build off of this skill a little bit more, bit by bit over the next couple of episodes. If you don't have this to refer back to, you won't be able to participate in the future homework assignments too. I'm also going to recommend that you maybe have a little notepad, notebook, journal, something that you can write down these homework assignments in and your future creations. This is going to act as your memory notebook, your mnemonics notebook. So as we build these lists and we build these skills, you'll have a reference point to come back to because it's really difficult to get all of this material the first time for some students. I know it was for me. And when we get into more advanced techniques, we're going to need a reference point in case we forget something down the road. We don't want to lose that visual mnemonic or later on that memory palace or whatever we've created because we forgot to write it down. So always have a reference to come back to. And if you would like a head start on some of the material that's to come in the next couple of weeks, feel free to buy our book, Read This Before Medical School. We have a great compilation of not only mnemonics techniques, but speed reading techniques, study skills, specific board exam test techniques, and charts that can help you find what mistakes you're making, not just, oh, I got this wrong in microbiology, but was it because of this? Was it because of that? Things that were not really taught in school, and they can really help you isolate your own personal weaknesses so that you can focus on them more. So if you would like that, read this before medical school. We do have our free essentials guide that you can download at freemeded.org slash medstudent. And I'll see you next week with our episode on mind maps, where we will try to bring back today's homework assignment. The Medical Mnemonist Podcast is powered by Med School Coach. To access Med School Coach services, including USMLE tutoring and residency admissions advising, visit our website at medschoolcoach.com. Good luck as you prepare for your board exams, and we hope you tune in again next time.